All right, so what we have to do as an aircraft, in order to take off, you want to take off into the direction of the wind. So a pilot looks at that thing right there. That's called a wind sock. It shows that the wind is blowing in that direction. So we're going to be going all the way down to the beginning of that runway, turning around and flying in this direction to take off. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to do what we call an engine run-up. I have to make sure the engine's operating properly before we take off. So I'm just going to pull off to the side here, face the plane into the wind. And from here, I'm going to rev up this engine and just make sure it's operating properly. All right now, I'm just watching that tachometer right there. We're at 4,000 RPM, and I'm just shutting off parts of the engine to see how it operates. And it's working perfectly. Nice. Now, if you do have any questions, please question away. Uh, I'll start talking you through this stuff when we get up in the air. Okay. Universal okay. traffic, Sports Star, Golf, Indy, Julius here is rolling 3 1 straight out to Collingwood. So we're just going to wait for him to take off. Once he passes us, we're going to go and start that way. Um, a couple of things here. In an airplane, this is how we know how fast we're going. This is our airspeed indicator. Okay. Similar to a speedometer, but it tells us the speed that the air is traveling over the wing. Right now it's at zero. The other thing is, this is our altimeter. It tells us how high above sea level we are. So I'm just going to make an announcement here. Email traffic, Juliet Kilo Yankees on the back track, 3-1. So if you notice, it says we're already at 720 feet. Yeah. So that's because this airport is 720 feet above sea level. So before a pilot takes off, you calibrate this to the elevation of the airport you're at. So whenever this thing tells us that we're at 1,000 feet, we are not 1,000 feet off the ground, we're only 1,000 feet above sea level. So for the beginning of our flight today, we'll take this thing up to maybe 2,000 feet above sea level, which is around 13, 1,400 feet over the ground. Um, we'll leave the vicinity of the airport, and then I'll start walking you through how to control this thing. I'm just going to reach down here between our legs and pull this lever here. That's called flaps. Leaving the circuit off 3-1 on route to Collingwood. They exist underneath the wing. They kind of drop down a little bit, and they create a bigger wing for more air to be grabbed. It helps us lift easier. Uh, if I pull them all the way, it's going to create a lot of lift, but it's also going to create a lot of drag and try to pull us, slow us down. So I don't want to pull them all the way up unless I'm coming to land. Uh, yeah. Alright, so it seems like you know a little bit about aircraft. Uh, watch a lot of videos. Cool, nice. All right, man, so we're lined up, we're ready for takeoff, the camera is rolling. I'm just going to take this control stick, pull it to a neutral position. For the beginning of the flight, just stay away from the stick. Sure. I'm going to get us to a safe area, and then I'm going to get you on it, okay? Sure. Edaville traffic, Juliet Kilo Yankees on the roll, 3-1, straight out departure, climbing to 2,000 feet. All right, so this is my throttle here. I'm going to squeeze and unlock it, and I'm going to press it all the way in. There we go. And I'm just kind of steering the plane right now with my feet. Steering the, the back of the rudders with my feet, and we're off the ground. Simple as that. Wow. So it's going to be a little bit turbulent when we're climbing up, but it's going to get smoother as our flight goes on. Yeah. This time of the day produces a lot of turbulence because the sun is directly above us. And uh, as it shines down, straight down onto the earth, it heats the air and the air rises and kind of shakes around a bit. The hot air rising underneath and hitting us. The higher we get off the ground, the smoother it's going to be. So in the summertime, it's quite rough when you take uh, when you're flying. Wintertime a little bit smoother. There was a good one. So those aren't dangerous, they're just shocking. Oh, beautiful. 
Uh, right now we're about 800 feet over the ground and climbing. Once it gets to 1,700, that means we're 1,000 feet over the ground. Approaching altitude. So here's 1,000 feet. Leaving altitude. Bring this thing to 2,000 feet above sea level, which is 1,300 feet over the ground. I'm just going to push this stick forward to level us off. And I'm going to reduce the throttle a little bit because I don't need to climb anymore. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to announce to the airport we left at, just let them know we're leaving their area so they don't have to worry about looking for us. Yep. Edenville traffic, Juliet Kilo Yankee, four miles north of the field, departing the zone, 2,000 feet. Okay, man, so we're high above the Wasega Beach uh, Collingwood area. Uh, we have options on which way you, you're going to want to go during your flight today. Right over here is the city or town of Wasega Beach. Over there is Collingwood Blue Mountain. You can see the ski hills there. Um, the direction over there is Barrie. Uh, geez, you can go in any direction. Uh, I think we're going to have to climb a bit higher to get away from this bumpiness. You're not going to like driving in that. So you control the plane mostly by this control stick. The feet also are responsible for controlling, but I'll show you that a little bit later. I will get you playing with the stick first. I'm just adding a little bit of power to help us climb. Kind of just looking around for other airplanes. I don't want to fly too close to somebody else. The air is getting a bit smoother the higher we go. Calling with traffic, Indy Julius here is crossing overhead to join a bit left down 131. All right, Cam, let me show you a few things how to work this thing. Yep. All right, so you can take the stick with whatever hand you want, you can decide. Now, if you were going to be training to be a pilot, you would have to use your left hand because your right hand has to be available eventually to use your throttle. So you can try training that way, or you can just do it for fun with your right hand, however you'd like. Okay, so good. Now put your hand on that stick. Yeah, put your hand on the stick, grab the yep. stick. Just a gentle grip on the control stick, and I'm going to walk you through a few motions of the aircraft. So to, so to turn an aircraft, we, uh, we have to control what we call our roll movement. Roll is like this. Yeah. Rolling is done by the wings. The two things on the edges of the wings out there are called ailerons. They're like, you see them moving yeah. right there? Yeah. So, if we want to turn the aircraft to the right, we take this stick and hold on to it, and we're just going to do a gentle roll like this to the right. You'll notice the aircraft's going to bank, and it's going to get steeper and steeper and steeper until we pull it back. Uh -huh. If we don't pull it back, it will end up upside down. We don't want that. This plane is not built for inversion flight, so we don't want to mess around with that kind of stuff. Yep. Same thing, now we're going to do a left turn together. We're just going to take that stick and a little pull to the left. Aircraft's banking, and now you can see the nose is starting to turn us left. Yeah. And we'll pull it back. There's a big old Wasega Beach. All right, so now we're flying straight and level again. The other thing that the stick was responsible for is for pitch. Pitch is going up or down. So if we want to go up, we just take the stick and pull it gently towards us, and you'll notice the nose come up. The other thing we notice that happens, this starts climbing. Our airspeed starts slowing down because we're running out of energy as we're going up. 
So this is when the pilot decides, do I need more power or do I not pull back on the stick as hard? And this is the power, right? Correct. So if I wanted to climb fast, I would give it full power and pull back. But you don't want it to go any slower than 60. Tide, so it's currently 5 miles uh, north of Orlake, like 3,500 east mountain of Skoka. So 60 is the safety speed in this aircraft. I don't like going slower than it unless we're doing serious training. Yep. Uh, because if you go too slow in a plane, you end up doing what they call a stall. A stall means there's no more air traveling over the wings and the plane begins to fall like a brick. Yep. There's ways to get out of it, of course, and that's what we train how to do. But it's a dangerous procedure nonetheless. Yep. So we stay away from it when possible. All right, so now we're flying at 2,800 feet. We're roughly 2,000 feet over the ground. Uh, directly in front of us that way is the city of Midland and Penetanguishene. Yep. Just giving you an idea where we're at. And if we wanted to descend, all we do is take this nose and push it down. You'll notice that you can see yep. the ground coming towards us. Yep. You can start feeling a little bit more vibration in the aircraft because it's picking up speed. And you can see that we're in a descent. It's starting to drop. Now, if I was to push the nose straight down, it'll go too fast, start going into the yellow danger zone. And worst case scenario, past the red line, which the plane could start falling apart. Even in the yellow zone, the plane could start falling apart. We don't want that. <laughs> so I'm going to level it off right around here. And at this point, I'm going to turn it over to you and let you play around with the control stick. Sure. Feel free to do left turns, right turns, a little bit up and down to get used to the oh stick. So I actually changed my mind. Go for it. Any way you want to be more comfortable. So feel free to do it. I'm going to keep my hand close by. Yep. And you have control of the aircraft. Play around with it. Approaching altitude. All gentle motions, right? Everything's very gentle. So what you're feeling there is just a little bit of turbulence. Leaving altitude. Calling Wood Unicorn Radio Check, please. Call Phoenix Bravo Bravo Bravo. Very nice. Just very gentle, gentle on the control stick. Point it where you want it to go. Now, obviously, the trickiest thing to getting getting used to when you first yeah. start trying to fly is trying to fly but without going, going up and down and, down and all over the place. Yeah. Ideally, you want to fly just by keeping a level altitude yeah. and just kind of turning to where you want to go. Yeah. So I understand it's tricky for everybody in the beginning to get this thing right. You're always going to be drifting. All right, yeah. There's a bird right there. We want to avoid him, so we'll stay over here to the right. Well, the traffic, is rolling. Three Birds are not our friends. Yeah, you're doing well. Nice. A little bit of a balancing game, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of balancing. Yeah. Leaving altitude. So you're gradually descending and going down. So the lower we get to the ground, the more turbulent it's going to be. Yep. So let's maybe just altitude. stay up a little bit. That's right. Nice. And if there's any particular direction you'd like to go in, feel free to go. I'll just give you the ar areas that we have to watch out for. Well, Are you familiar with the area? Or? No, not at all, but... It well, should be fine. Let's go towards Barry. See that white over there? That's Lake Simcoe. Let's go that way. I'm just going to get you away from the airport, because the airport we took off from yeah. is just right over here, and I don't want to be around all the other planes flying. Leaving. 
Leaving altitude. They're controlling it nice and smooth. That's a good thing. A little bit of turbulence. Turbulence and wind. We have to stay. Well, you're That's you're climbing, so it's slowing okay. down. Yeah. yeah, as long as the plane's not going slower than 60, we're okay. Once you start going below 60, then some troubles can start happening. We're now at 3,000 feet above sea level. So try to level off here at 3,000 feet and just try to keep it at 3. Yep. And then feel free to do turns in any direction you want. How far did you have to drive from today? Came from Richmond Hill. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. An hour? An hour and ten minutes or so? Yeah, exactly. Is this something you ever thought about doing, or is it just something that, sh that you were given as a gift? It actually is something... Uh, she got it for the birthday. Birthday oh. given present. Oh yeah. Oh, it's really difficult to, to balance it out. Yeah, it is. It takes it takes a few hours to really get the hang of yeah. straight and level flying. Uh, the purpose of these type of flights that I'm doing with you is to give you an idea of what it's like to yeah. fly. And to let people know that it is possible to learn. This type of aircraft takes about 25 hours of flight training to learn how to fly, to get your license in. So about $4,500 to get a license to fly these two-seaters like this. That's my trying to, to balance it for yeah. 3,000 feet. It's tricky. So you're kind of, what you're fighting a little bit is a little bit of wind's kind of blowing us every which way. You're doing really well, okay, actually. Okay, it's not me, then. No, no, you're doing well. That's some, a little bit of thermal activity. So right now what's happening, you're, you're descending a bit, yep. picking up speed, and then when you hit the bumps, they feel more violent because we're getting more speed. Approaching altitude. Tricky, isn't it? It is. I have to balance everything. Yeah. Speed. And That's right. So another instrument that... Traffic, golf, golf. 
another I instrument that we have that we can look at to give us an idea if the plane is climbing or descending is this one right here. This is called vertical speed indicator. Yeah. If the needle is on the zero, we're at level. We're and flying Peterborough level. Unicom, uh, it's uh, Global Express Bombardier 35. 6.3 descending. So right there, the it shows that we're climbing, we're, uh, but your nose is down, so that means the heat is lifting us. It takes a while to get used to that uh, kind of stuff. In, uh, 12 minutes. What I would recommend for your first time flying is try not to even look much at this. Just look outside and fly with the stick. I'll watch that stuff to keep you safe, and the best way to learn is by seeing what's going on with the horizon and the ground, right? Peter, where you come on, you three five five Roger. If you have any questions for me, don't hesitate to ask, man. Sure, I'm trying to focus on altitude. Yeah, don't worry. Like, everything we're doing right now is very, very safe. So nothing's going to go wrong that I can't get us out of. Even if our engine failed, it's not a big deal. We're just going to end up landing in one of these fields. Yep. Now, I've never had an engine failure in this airplane before. Yep. But you train for it all the time. So I can show you now what the pedals do. Yep, sure. So might as well take your feet, and you'll notice there's two pedals down there. Just put your feet forward like mine are. Uh, yeah, put them straight up. That's right. Yep. And right up there. The pedals control the back of the plane called the rudder. That goes yep. like this. So if we want the rudder to go this way, pushing the, the tail of the plane this way, we push our left foot down. Watch what happens with the nose. Left foot. Now yeah, the nose starts coming this way. Yeah. It's because we're skidding the tail this way. I see. And then now if we push the right rudder down, you'll feel it slip this way. See that? Peterborough, Unicom, uh, Global Express, Lombardi. So now we're kind of slipping like that, yeah. sliding. 15 mile final. Sort of like a skid. So we use the rudders to try to keep us flying through the air in a straight line. Now the thing that tells us where our tail is, is this little ball. If the ball is in between those two little marks, that means the tail is following the nose. Yep. Right now it's a little bit off to the left. So we got to push our left foot down to straighten it right there. There we go. Approaching. Out. And it's always going to bounce around. You're never going to get it perfect. Yep. So we're getting a little bit close to the airport we took off from. That's right over here. So maybe we'll go back that way. We have to go this yeah, way. Yeah, anyway, yeah, sure. Make a turn to the right. I just don't want to be too close. So the pilot uses the pedals all the time, but just very little bit. Yeah. They become extremely important when it comes time to land. Because when you come to land, you got to make sure those tires are landing straight on the runway. So that's when we use those pedals to keep the plane straight when it touches down. Very nice. So right now you probably think we're moving very slow, but we're actually moving pretty quick. We're doing about 90 knots, which is around 170 kilometers an hour. Doesn't feel like it though, right? No, Cause, it doesn't. Because yeah. we're so high and far away from everything, right? Yeah. But it's a real quick way to get around and get places.
But this is the south. This way would be east. Yes. That way would be south. Yeah, that's the city of Barrie right over there with the, you can see where the lake kind of comes in yep. there. Even off in the distance, if you look this way and just kind of really study the horizon, yep. you can see the Toronto City skyline a bit. You can see a couple of buildings sticking up, but they're very, very faint. If you got good vision, you'll see oh, it. Oh, yeah, they are, yeah. yeah. So usually to, for me to fly to Toronto from here is about 40 minutes to get downtown to the island airport. Are you going there a lot? Are you flying there a lot? Not a lot. A few times a year I'll go there, but... For the most part, I just do, do most of the training with my students right there. We just go up, fly around, and we do certain exercises until you get good enough that you can handle it by yourself. Yeah. Like learning how to control altitude, learning how to do turns and tighter turns, steeper turns without losing altitude. And then eventually learning how to talk on the radio. Oh yeah, that's... That's, that's a whole important. language in itself, right? Usually even you're busy with these numbers and stuff. Yeah. Kinabari and Ecomback, Global, Bombardier, 35, 4 miles and all, runway 27, uh, for our landing. That's another ski resort there. Small little one. But you're doing good, man. You're doing all the flying, I'm not. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah, so every once in a while, we just got to fight those, right? When they come. Yeah. You can't let the wind win. Because we have to land and live at the end of the day, right? Yeah, absolutely. Questions for me at all yet? Uh, no, not really. Okay. That doesn't mean I don't have any question. That means <laughs> I don't yeah, have it at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Peter, road traffic for 172. Even from here, if you look at the horizon over here, you'll see little tiny sticks sticking up. Yeah. Those are all windmills. Electricity windmills. Yeah. Off to our left over there, it looks like a little town, but that's the base, Canadian Forces Base Borden. So it's a military base, so we can't fly over top of that. Oh, I see. Some days it's pretty neat when you're flying around this area and they're they're doing tank training or whatnot. You'll see the explosions. Wow. Or hear it. You would even hear it sometimes up here. I know one thing that a lot of people are reluctant to ask me, but I like to kind of prove that it doesn't happen, is, you know, you watch a movie and you see an airplane and the engine quits and then they start crashing? Yeah. That doesn't happen. <laughs> no? That's all movies. So, for instance, I, I can demonstrate for you what happens. I'm not going to shut the engine off. 
but I can demonstrate for you what happens if our engine was to stop working. Yeah. And all that becomes is this airplane no longer is an airplane, it becomes a glider. We just glide. And we are je we are descending, but it's not at a fast rate. It doesn't nosedive. So yeah, because of the wings, right? Exactly. So I'll give you an example of exactly what it feels like. I'm just going to take control for a second. Sure. I have control. I'm going to reduce the power. Reducing the engine, reducing the engine. Now the engine is not doing anything. Yep. So I'm just going to get the right speed set. All right. So this is an airplane with no engine. Wow. So we are in a safe, gentle descent. We are running out of time to find a nice, safe spot to land, but yep. you can see we have a lot of time to pick yep. a spot. Leaving so if we had to, I would be landing in one of these fields right here, and even right here, there's a runway, yeah. a grass one right in front of us. Yep. So there's one movie myth broken right there, because it drives me crazy. I watch a TV show, and they see the engine fail, and they start nosediving. I've been flying for 26 years, and I've never seen that happen. So you can take over again. All right, you have control. Yeah, the only thing that would cause a plane to nosedive would be structural failure of the plane. Like if you really beat it up, if it was shot up maybe, or if a cable broke that controls one of these surfaces yeah. where it forces the nose down. But that is so damn rare. Put it this way, if I thought that that was a threat, I wouldn't be doing this. <laughs> so the airport we took off from is right over here. Yeah. We're okay, we're far enough away from it. I'm going to try to squeeze out as much time as I can for you. Thank you. So right now we're at, we're at a half hour. Uh, my next appointment's going to be there a quarter after. Um, so my next appointment's there in 15 minutes. So I might be able to get you 45 minutes in the air, but there's... Leaving altitude. Dude, man, I didn't hear from you. <laughs> I know, man. I'm, I'm so sorry, but uh, I, I should have checked my emails. Well, the bonus is, is uh, you'll now have a produced video, so that's a yeah. good thing. And if you're okay with that, privacy-wise, it'll be on YouTube. And sure. All your friends can see it. That was a good one. So in the summertime, those bumps that we're feeling yeah. are 10 times worse. Wow. They just really beat us up. I always thought that uh, the cold weather is causing that problems. No. Well, it is in a way. It's We're in cold air, but warm air rises. So because it's cold air, it causes the warm to rise. Kilo, Bravo 4 to the north inbound, crossing overhead to join a mid-left downwind, 431. But in the summertime, the air is always colder up here than it is on the ground. And the land gets heated up by that sun, so when those hot pockets of air come rising, they're violent. So generally in the summertime, when I'm doing flight training with people, we go to 3,000 feet or above. Anything below that is just punishment. Yeah, see right here is nice and stable. But once you go down a few hundred feet, it's going to start rocking again. Yeah, see, you can handle doing this. Doing good, man. Thanks, man. I get that it's not for everybody. Some people get motion sickness, a little bit of air sickness. Yeah. Uh, I used to get that in the beginning of flying. And um, I'm glad I trusted my flight instructor because he told me, just keep flying and it'll stop. I didn't believe him. I thought he was just trying to take my money. But eventually, it did stop. After six, seven hours of constant flight training, it went away. 
But in the beginning, I used to get very sick. Like, oh, terrible. You doing okay like that? Like yeah, it doesn't bother traffic. you? Yeah, traffic. Kilo Kilo Bravo coming up overhead to field. trying to mid left downwind for 3-1. Level tricky is 30. Yeah. So the airport is over there, right? Uh, no, it's actually there. That's a different one. There, there's a lot of airports in Ontario. Yeah, so that's Collingwood Airport, and the one we took off from is back there, Edenvale Airport. Leaving altitude. Approaching altitude. Edenville traffic, Kilo Zulu Bravo established, mid left down, 131. Another little small ski hill right in front of us there. You yeah. can see the white. And don't be afraid. If you want to turn it a little more aggressively, go for it. It can, it can handle it. As long, as long as you're not slamming it, it yeah. can handle it. I can even see, I can see the Toronto skyline again with the CN Tower, right? In yeah. that direction. Yeah. So we're going to have to start turning in the direction of the airport. Sure. So just keep doing a left turn. So, another thing that people find shocking is when it comes time to go land a plane, yeah. we don't just go to any runway we want to, we have to Signal go, traffic. we have to land at, at the runway that faces into the wind. So the pilot either tries to figure out which way the wind's blowing while they're in the air, yeah. or they call another pilot that's near that airport and they'll tell you what's going on, or you fly near the airport and look at the windsock. Yeah. Now, I'm pretty sure that the wind is still in the same direction it was when we took off. So we're gonna be landing on runway 31. Uh, that's the one we took off on. So start going that direction over there. A little bit more left, I'll get you pointed towards the airport. We'll actually point it towards the water over there, the white ice you see out there. Yep. We'll go right towards that. Now, in order to land a plane, we have to enter a procedure called the circuit. The circuit's an imaginary highway that exists above, the, above an airport. In altitude. We're going to be landing okay. on the runway going this way, right? Yeah. This way. So when I look at this piece of paper here, that purple line, I know it's hard to see because you're steered. The purple line represents the runway. We're going to be landing this way. Uh -huh. We're out here flying. We have to fly like this and go like this, like this, and then land. Got it, yep. Yeah. So in order to do that, we have to do it at a certain altitude. We, could, we have to be a thousand feet over the ground. So in order to do that, we're going to have to start descending now. So you're going to have to start bringing the nose down, and we have to go to 1,700 feet, and gradually take us there. I'm going to start reducing power, and just fly in this direction. The airport we're going to be going to is over there, but this you want to keep going this way, because eventually we're going to turn and go right yeah. into this section called the downwind. That's it.
You're doing good though, man. Thank you. You're holding it together. A lot of people grab that stick and they, they just, they're glued to it, you know what I mean? And holding it. So I'm going to make a radio announcement to the air traffic over there to let them know what we're up to. Sure. Edenville traffic, Sports Star India, Juliet, Kilo Yankees, five miles west of the field, descending through 2300 to circuit altitude, and going to join us straight in, left down to win, 3-1. Edenville traffic, Kilo Bravo, 3-1-0-8-5-5-6. So you're going to notice that the lower we get to the ground, the more violent it's going to get with the turbulence. I'm just slowing that engine down a lot. So see this highway right here? Yep. We're gonna kind of just follow that highway now. We're gonna make a right turn and just kind of follow Departure along that highway. Altitude. Might get a little tricky now that with all this turbulence yeah. down here. So we don't want to go any lower than this. Awesome. So we're just going to keep going in this direction, right towards the airport. Yep. And at a certain point, we're going to make a little bit of more of a right turn. All right, we'll go nice and straight here. You're in a bit of a descent again. Pull back on that nose. That's right. Leaving altitude. Yeah, it started picking up a lot of speed when that altitude. happened. Peterville traffic, Juliet Kilo Yankee, established left downwind, 3 1, full stop. So you can see the airport here, right? Yep. The runway we want is the one going that way. Uh -huh. So now we're going to start making a right turn and we're going to fly parallel to it. Right so, turn? Yeah, you're going to make a bit of a right turn, and we're like this on this black line. Uh -huh. That's right. And we're going to go off in that direction. There we are. Now we're on the highway called the Downwind Lake. So this is where a pilot gets a chance to size up the airport. We're looking to see if there's any planes on the runway, yep. any people, vehicles, animals, anything like that. We can also see the windsock is yeah. kind of pointing this way still. So this is where it's going to get really tricky. Because we have to make it sharp. Well, we have to make another turn that way, and then another turn for landing, but then i got to put flaps on, and we have to control the speed Altitude. very precisely. Should I turn now? Not yet. So right now we just passed the runway. We're going to wait till that runway is about 45 degrees behind us. Okay. So we'll just continue in this direction a bit more and we'll pull that nose back just a bit. We want to get back up a little bit. Approaching altitude. All right. So right around here we're going to make a left turn in that direction. Peterville traffic, Juliet Kilo Yankees turning uh, left base. Three one. So this is what I find most people have the hardest time doing is landing. Because there's a lot of stuff going on here. So we're going to go nice and straight this way. Traffic, uh, Petcom, Bravo, Alpha, India, two miles north, inbound for landing, uh, 3,000 feet descending. Nice. Oh, and just straight yeah. in downwind. Three. Say again? Should I let it go? No, you can hold on to it. You can hold on to it with me, okay? Okay. I'm just going to reduce power. I want to get this plane in that white area. That yep. means it's safe for me to pull my flaps on. Yep. There we go, flap one, flap number two. Now the nose is gonna come down, and now we're in a nice descent with flaps. So I have to try to hold 65 knots for the entire duration of this flight. We're at 66, 65, I'm doing that with the stick. Yep. Interville traffic, Juliet Kilo Yankee turning final, 3-1, full stop.
I'm adding a little bit of power because I don't want it to sink too fast. This is what they call final approach. And the pilot's normally just focused on trying to aim for the numbers at the beginning of the runway. Okay. And trying to maintain a proper airspeed. So when I feel this plane about to go too slow, I got to push the nose down to pick up speed. There's some wind just picked us up there. See how it's lifting us? But I just got to fight it. Oh yeah, there's some real wind there. Right now I shut that engine off. It's not doing anything. Just letting us glide down. This is where my feet become very useful here. This is where I'm going to start yeah. pushing the rudders. Just like that. So you did well, man. Wow. Thank you, Bill. Oh, you're welcome, man. It was literally fun. <laughs> well, I'm glad we were able to make it happen. Thank you very much again.